I think that one of the most important things for us to do is to get out that word. She's one of the first women ever to ride in the Tour de France, ESPN journalist and pro cyclist Catherine Bertine, now an activist for gender equality and women's competitive cycling. Her new book is called Stand, a memoir on activism, a manual for progress. What really happens when we stand on the front lines of change? It details her journey through bullying, abandonment, depression, and a near fatal crash. She joins us live. Thank you so much for Good being morning. with us. Good morning, Larry and Robin. Nice to meet you, and thanks for having me. Thanks for being with us. So this book is a lot um, about a lot more than cycling, but I think it's very interesting. Your journey to even become a professional cyclist, it was a long time coming. You didn't start that till you were over 30 years old, and you were in a lot of different sports before then. Talk about that. Correct. Yeah, I grew up like uh, many kids exposed to all different sports and I enjoyed playing, you know, everything from from running to uh, figure skating, rowing. And I had no idea that cycling was in my path of the future. And I did not get on a road bike until I was 31 years old. So well, it was a long start to the career, but it turns out that in endurance sports, um, women are especially geared to endurance at a later age. So it actually served me well. Huh. Well, usually athletes are not the ones being bullied. Why were you bullied? Well, strangely enough, I thought that standing up for women's rights would be something that that all women women would believe in. And it turned out that I met some opposition along the way because a lot of women thought that by standing up and speaking out for change in gender equity, it would draw negative attention to uh, to things that that women didn't want to be part of. You know, it was better that we were that we smile and wave and pretend everything is okay rather than call attention to the inequity. So I got a lot of pushback for that, and it was very surprising at the time. Was it pushback from other female athletes, or these women who were you know didn't have uh, have uh, they they weren't in on the game? Great question. Um, it was it was both. There were a couple of women who were idols to me, people I looked up to professionally, where I worked as either a journalist or as a professional cyclist. Uh, sometimes that pushback came from management in the field. Um, I had a team manager that just wanted me to be quiet and stop talking about women's equality in sport. And you know, I had a, a boss in journalism who felt like, no, we can't write about these types of issues. That draw negativity to to women's sports so Ooh. yeah that was a big crash yeah wow <laughs> wait so you had it was this was that video we just saw was was that the injury did you were you injured in that fall that changed uh, that was a pretty serious one that particular fall that you just saw was actually Kristen Armstrong who's oh gosh sorry that's okay. Three times she's a three-time Olympic gold medalist. I'm happy to be mistaken for her any day. <laughs> but <laughs> my personal crash uh, happened a few years later um, in 2016, and it is it is normal in cycling to have crashes. What's abnormal is to have it at such an intensity or such a level where um, one might break their skull twice. <gasps> and, oh. Yeah, it, almost not come back from that. So I'm very, very fortunate that fast acting doctors that were on the course that day were able to save, save my life. And now I'm deemed, um, you know, just as weird as I ever was. So <laughs> I somehow made it through that, but uh, it, was, it was quite an ordeal for sure. What kind of lessons can people take away from, from your book if they're not a competitive athlete, if they're not a cyclist? I'm sure it translates into real life. Thank you. That's, I hope it does too, because really it's not a book about cycling. It is a book about what happens when we fight for what we believe in. And what I'm hoping is the main takeaway here is that anybody, regardless of wealth or fame or Olympic gold medalists or you know any level of that regard that we often associate with change, I want people to know that we're all capable of affecting change. And you know, I was able to get the ball moving and have a women's race included at the Tour de France. And at the time I started fighting for this change, I was an amateur cyclist working as a waitress and struggling in the you know, 2009 economic crash that we had. So if I were able to get change started, then it proves that anybody is able to make pretty impressive, incredible things happen in this world. All right, and once again, the book is called Stan. You can follow Catherine on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, or go to her website, catherinebertine.com. 
Thanks for joining us this morning. Thanks, Catherine. Thanks for having me.